You're listening to that gets my goat. You should know better. Okay, so that gets my goat. We're continuing our talk about brave, and I know that you had things that you wanted to say, but do you want to say something before I just jump in and tell no, you? Go ahead and jump in. I felt like, and I don't know because I don't. Uh, you have a friend that works at Pixar. But he's not in the upper echelon, and I don't know if there are, like, hierarchies and nobody talks to Lester, that kind of stuff. That's kind of how corporations work, is that there are levels Mm -hmm. and that you associate with the people on your level. Right. But even if we could get him on the phone, he might not know the answer on this. But I felt like they were trying to do their version of Disney Princess. And say, you know, all of the complaints that Disney princesses have got over the last 20 years, we're going to address that in this movie. And from the beginning of the movie, I was waiting for the love interest to step in. I was waiting for Merida to see somebody and suddenly the music would swell and her heart would go a pitter patter and she would find love. And that's where our finale comes from. That's our climax. That's our goal. That's what is the most important thing in life. And that never happened. Even at the end of the movie where all of the clans were getting on their boats and going their separate ways and they were all a tighter unit or whatever. I was like, okay, it's still going to happen. Merida's going to be, she's going to get married off at some point. She's got a love interest because that's what is a girl's duty. And they never did it. It's like they had heard all of that criticism of a Disney princess is pretty. First and foremost, Disney princess is looking for a man who can sweep her off her feet and take her away from all this. And that completes a girl. That's what you need to be. She only has value when that happens. And there was never a moment from the beginning to the end that anybody ever referred to Merida as beautiful or pretty or attractive or comely or stacked or any of that stuff (laughs) that we value in our Disney princesses. She was just a person first and foremost. And the fact that she happened to be female was secondary. I've never seen that. I'm serious, man. You might be able to name a movie or three, but I can't. You know, it's always the beautiful and resourceful, the beautiful and smart, the beautiful and troubled female in any one of these movies. You know, it's like the beautiful and deadly Angelina Jolie, you know, kind of thing. But beautiful is the most important thing. They don't go to Hollywood unless they're beautiful. It's like uglies need not apply. And I'm not saying that Merida was ugly, but there was never any shots of looking down her dress. There was never any moment. <laughs> dude, that was from beginning to end entangled, dude. I had a boner halfway through that movie. <laughs> there were never, you know, I didn't, they put her in the the... And it's not even a sexy dress, but they put her in the girly outfit. Uh-huh. You know, they tied her they into cinched her into the uh, her into the a, corset, and it was it was an uncomfortable, ugly dress. No, it wasn't ugly, but you know what I mean. It to her, that, it was ugly and all that. And it had that goofy cap, and it just uh, yeah, that made it ugly. And the thing with her hair, you were talking about the hair it was such a mess, and it was so all over. It was not glamorous. It was not beautiful. She was not sexy. She was not so. You know what I mean? She was. Yeah, they didn't have the slow mo shot where she tossed that hair. In the sunset, the light real the, bright behind the her. The Disney girls from Snow White on. So I'm talking about the first. There was always an attempt to make them attractive, to make them comely, to make them, you know, as we get farther and farther, you know, sexy or perfect or whatever the deal is. I remember being a kid and my heart just went, you know, with with how attractive Ariel was. And now, you know, she seems more, much more childish. But when you get to like Esmeralda or whatever, <laughs> or, or, or Jessica Rabbit, not that Jessica Rabbit is a Disney princess, but she is a Disney, yeah. you know, these, these super sexy, there's like a, a billboard with Rapunzel and Zachary Levi on it saying, you know, read a book and you'll be magical or something like that. You've seen yeah, it. Seen They're it. everywhere. And every time I see that, I'm like, oh. You know, I remember James Cameron talking about Natiri in Avatar. And he's like, we did this and this and this and this to make sure she would cause blood to go to your <laughs> To make sure that men would find, that you could see what Jake Sully found attractive in her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Merida was weird looking. She was almost <laughs> as weird looking as that 
girl in Snow White and the Huntsman that Charlize Theron takes the youth from. And then she's abandoned for the rest of the movie. And then she shows up at the end and she's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Spoiler. But it just she was weird looking or whatever. They they didn't sex her up in any way. They didn't feel the need. She was just a person. And I, I guess I get criticism for being a man or being a sexist or, or not being feminist or whatever. But For being a douchebag? Well, yeah. But <laughs> hopefully anybody who's a feminist or takes issue with some of these things can get behind what I'm talking about right now. I appreciated it. I was floored by it just because they didn't do all the things that we always see that I like. Belle is the most beautiful girl in the land and Gaston wants her and the Beast wants her and, and you know, and, and all the townspeople want her and all that stuff. It's a pity she's smart and all that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that's what we prize in women above everything. And I'm saying we, the capital W, as men or as our society or as earth and this didn't go there I, I, I remember a lot of people making a big deal just a month ago or two months whenever avengers came out that in the poster you could see black widow's butt mm -hmm. but none of the other avengers were showing their butts because they were men and it's not expected of them but it is expected of a comic book heroine and I guess I would be tempted in any other occasion to defend that and say, that's one of her weapons, folks. You know, she's an assassin that uses her beauty to get to these guys and all that stuff. But I'm not going to excuse it now. It's, it's just how we see things. And this movie chose not to do that. And so I shook my head and I couldn't believe it. And well, I, the way I'm always talking about they need to make a good Wonder Woman movie so girls have a role model that they can look up to. You better cast somebody that looks like Megan Fox to be Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? Because she's hot and stacked first. And she's all these other things second. The beautiful and tough Wonder Woman. Yeah, and, and, and that's something that we like about them. It's something that we prize, that we value, that we desire. I mean, how many times you open a comic book the women are always perfect. And I know that, that in video games, apparently that's a problem too, because they're really objectified. And, and my inclination is that's okay. That's what it's for or whatever. What artist wants to draw an ugly woman? How many ugly women are there in comic books? But it's still not cool. It's still objectification, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and the fact that I think it's okay is probably something that I need to change within myself. And I don't know. I, I have not read any interviews or anything about Brave. But it's the first one with a female director. And I wouldn't be surprised if in interviews she said, you know, I, I wanted to try doing things a different way. I'd seen how fairy tales are told, animated fairy tales, my whole life. And I thought, well, let's try it a different way. And so that was my favorite thing about the movie because... It was just so shocking to me because I was waiting for it. And we've talked endlessly about the obligatory love interest in a superhero movie mm -hmm. that drags down the narrative that goes nowhere. They're, good, they're just going to have to break them up later, just going to have to kill her later or whatever so, so you can continue to tell stories. And this movie didn't go there. I mean, they could do a whole new Brave sequel that's about whether you know Merida is ever going to find love but that wasn't their priority in this she was able to have a full arc of her character and go from point a to point c and find happiness and purpose in life without a man being involved yeah. i think wow. in, in the sequel i think she'll go and get a spell to finally be able to understand what the hell that guy with the brogue is saying and suddenly it'll finally break through <laughs> That guy cracked me up a lot. Sorry. Are these things, that, all these points that I'm rambling about, are these anything that occurred to you that as you were watching it, did you feel like, okay, which of these three guys is she going to dig? Okay, well, maybe there's going to be a spell. Maybe the guy that's a bear is going to, maybe they'll fall. You know, were you anticipating the loathe? I didn't, I guess. I was just rolling along with the story and letting it take me where I, where it was going. I, guess, I don't know. Maybe... 
maybe that's a fault in me as a storyteller that that I don't sit there and pick stories apart. I have heard that before said that being a writer of stories makes it impossible to enjoy stories because the whole time you're dissecting any story that you read or see or hear. Okay, and and I I hear you. I, but the whole time I was Which means going, I'm a crappy writer. I wasn't going, ooh, I, or whatever. But it was just something that I was left with afterward where my expectations were not met and I was delighted. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about it the whole time. I was also taken along and didn't know where the story was going to go. And, and, and so... There was something about this movie. I mean, we talked about it in the last episode, how you knew nothing about it. They didn't give you any idea. Like the fact that I didn't think her mom was turning into a bear. From what I'd seen from the trailers, I, I knew you did see the three little boy bears. So I knew that her brothers were going to wind up being bears, which took forever to happen. <laughs> so the was, kids were just forgotten. I was expecting it to happen really early on along at the same time that uh, when her mom turns into a bear. And then I was like, okay, and the kids. And I'd seen that big, ugly, scary bear in the uh, trailers and I assumed that was what you know because her dad was this beast of a man he was you know he wouldn't fit through a door probably he'd have to turn sideways to go through a door he's this gigantic dude I just assumed that's what he looked like as a bear he was the one that was turning into a bear the whole time I had no idea it would be her mom because never once in any of the stuff did you see a shot of that bear by design yeah obviously and I don't I don't know why. Is it because it took so long to get to that point? And if they had tipped the scales in the trailers and the ad campaigns, we'd be waiting for that to happen? Like, you know, when they show the end of a movie in a trailer and you're just waiting <laughs> for that moment. And it's like, whoa, that didn't happen until the end. I don't know. I, have, I really don't understand why they'd leave it out. But because I knew so little about that movie, you know, the whole thing seemed to surprise me. I don't know what it was about it that it just left me like I was, oh, oh, to the point where things like that escaped me. I I might have noticed it second. I I did read somewhere somebody saying something about that, about how, you know, it was not about her finding love or whatever. Oh, okay. So somebody else. Uh, Somebody else, I think, mentioned that on Facebook or somewhere like that. So I had crossed my mind, but not while I was sitting there watching it. I just watched the story and enjoyed it for what it was. And that could even be one of those things where, you know, we were talking earlier about how they tried to make it friendly. It's a girl main character. It's a dynamic between a girl and her mother. So basically the two main characters are girls. And maybe that was one of those things that they did to try to not alienate boys. They didn't bring in the love story part of it because that's another thing that, you know, girls like love stories. Boys, oh, they hate it. It's icky. Ew, they're kissing. You know, maybe that was an attempt to avoid alienating boys again. I don't know. I hope not. I hope they did it for the reasons that you said, you know, where they just wanted to say, hey, she's a person and that's all that matters. And she could be queen. And rule her country with wisdom and authority without being married off to some dude. I'm just saying that this is the future for Merida. Not that I want her to be lonely like I am, but it's just it's really refreshing and really brave of them to do this. We finally found a reason for the title. But I, there may be other people that disliked the movie for that same reason. Because we've seen somebody hate a movie and somebody love the same movie for the same reason because everybody responds differently everybody yeah. feels differently and everybody has their life experiences or beliefs or fears that they draw on when they see a movie and or certain buttons are pushed and that doesn't do anything for me but it pushes your buttons like crazy yeah that's and I, totally I just, true i don't know on this except for that i'm glad that i liked it this probably has been a long episode. I don't know. But last time we talked about movies, I hadn't seen Snow White and the Huntsman yet. Uh-huh. But I have seen that now. And that's interesting in that that's a movie where you've got a female protagonist and a female antagonist. And so what do you do to make guys go see this movie? Well, A, you put Huntsman in the title and you beef up this character's part. And you have the prince character 
in no way appear in any of the commercials or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You might as well not have him in, you know, I, I would imagine that people that went and saw that movie says, oh, there is a guy that's going to come and, wow, I, I didn't expect that. There were moments in Snow White and the Huntsman that really surprised me and really impressed me, but I think it fell short of being a great movie. And, and that's something that we could talk about if you ever wanted to go see that movie. It'd be fun to just talk about it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that movie. I don't want to pay full price for it, though, I'm afraid. The idea of a movie, because uh, uh, nowadays every movie is supposed to, well, these tentpole films, the, the studios have put all of their money into, they have to be four quadrant films, which is this 21st century industry term for, you know, appealing to boys and girls and men and women. And so, that, you know, they'll, they'll contort themselves in every way to try and, you know, they'll give Brooklyn Decker a, a big thing to do on the mountain with the guy with no legs and stuff in hopes that that will satiate part of the audience. And yeah, it just, I, I, I don't get that. It, I, I use Bridesmaids as an example from last summer. That was a movie that had female main characters and it was about... A wedding and, 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 and having to get the dress and all that stuff. But it was just as entertaining to guys as it would be to women. And of course, it's a, uh, an aberration. There's not a lot of movies that are like that, that, that seem to be ostensibly made for women. But guys are like, well, no, that was hilarious, man, or, or whatever the deal is. Mm -hmm. But not all movies have to be that. Of course, when you spend $250 million on a movie then I guess it has to. You have to ensure that the most people can go see it. I don't know what Brave cost. Did you see when you looked it up? I did. It was something like 185 it was. Uh, okay, I, I don't have anything more to say about it. I, I don't know. You had me, I... hold on. You had me look up the budget. Why oh. would you have me do that? We, we had hold music and everything for it. Why are we doing this? Okay. Just whether they, you know, were worried about appealing to boys and to men and you know, in the same way that, I, you know, you got to beef up the huntsman and show him right. that he's played by the guy who's Thor and all that stuff to get guys to go see Snow White and the Huntsman. And I, I don't know if it had just been called Snow White, would it have made less money? My guess is, yeah, it might at have least, might at least have. by what the analysts say or the number. Crunchers. That movie was really trying to be like Alice in Wonderland, which was just called Alice in Wonderland. It wasn't called Alice in right. Mad Hatter, although it should have been because that's yeah. all the ad campaign was about. That kind of a thing was totally done. To, so it could have just been Snow White and then this is not your father, Snow White. Bastard. What? The next one will be called Snow White and the Temple of Doom. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they'll go with it because they, it, like I said, it does end. It tells the whole fairy tale except for who does she end up with? And so... I believe she lived happily ever after. That's no, all that matters. No, apparently not. I don't know what we'll, we'll see. It, uh, that seems kind of unprecedented to tell a story that everybody knows and then to tack a sequel onto it after <laughs> the first one is successful. The, the point I guess I was trying to make about that was just it was courageous of them to try something different. I felt like it was something different. There had been criticism that all the Pixar movies had male right. protagonists. And part of me really rebelled against that because I was just like, well, dude, there are gigantic buttloads of Disney princesses. Can't Pixar be about something else? Come on. I mean, there are so many girl centric Disney animated films, but everybody wants to belong. Everybody wants somebody mm -hmm. to tell a story to them. Maybe and if they, you've seen movies that alienate you so many times, I, I can understand. Maybe they were like those people that uh, didn't like the way the Disney princesses were and they trusted Pixar to make a good princess. And please just give us one. Maybe and, that know, was what they were after. And, you know, it's possible that there are people that, that dislike it, that hate that she fired arrows and rode horses and she did traditionally boy-centric things. I, I don't know if you can have your cake and eat it too, but 
I think above all, she was a person. She was a human being. I don't think you can because once you eat your cake, then you don't have it. Exactly. I don't know why we even say that. Why do people say that? Where did that come from? Is that French? (laughs) But I, I liked it and I recommend Brave and I would be happy to see it again. And uh, I'm happy to see it make money. And I fully expect that people will continue to go see it next week as well. Or maybe by the time this episode airs, it's long forgotten. But uh, I think the word of mouth will be good on this. Uh, And I'm proud of Pixar. I will continue to go see anything Pixar makes, even if it is Monsters, Inc. in a frat house. (laughs) Yeah, we'll have to see how that one goes. Each sequel, I fear, for the most part, surprisingly, they've done well. Toy Story, 100. Toy Story 2, 100. Toy Story 3, 99. But, yeah, Cars Cars 2, not quite as good. So we'll have to see how uh, Monsters Zero comes out. These are the jokes, kid. Is this thing on? I I was the ball. That's what the Zero is. It's going to be Mike... He was the uh, disco ball, too, as well. Yeah, but often the ad campaigns are misleading. And I, they had a trailer for Finding Nemo 3D, and they made sure to get in the fart joke. <laughs> Still, it's the best fart joke ever. Nice. All right, folks, I've been Rish Outfield, and uh, if you had the chance to change your fate. Would you? Why not? See you, babe. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. Those little the wisps were really neat. They're creepy. One second. Hold music playing. Oh, damn it. I hate when that happens.